Hi, in this video we've got a new hot air station to look at and this one is the Quick TR1 and this one's quite different from the usual Quick hot air stations in that it's just a single handpiece and then it has the mains cable going directly to it. So this has everything integrated into it and therefore it makes a lot of sense for people who don't have a lot of space for the bulk of a main unit on their desk. So this video is sponsored by PCBWay, your one-stop shop for all things project related. You can get your PCBs manufactured here with a wide variety of customizable options. You can get those PCBs assembled with components on both sides of the PCB. And they also do manufacturing capabilities related to mechanical stuff, so CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding. And I'd also like to draw your attention to the project design contest. This is the seventh one that PCBWay have run, where if you have a project in one of these three categories, you can participate and potentially win some quite large prizes. So we've got uh, mechanical projects, electronic projects and also projects that use an STM32. You can submit your project any time up until the 19th of January 25 and then it will be reviewed and then the results will be announced in March 25 and there's some quite decent prizes to be won. The first prize winner will get $1,500 in cash and also a $200 coupon and then various other prizes below that. So don't forget to submit your project at pcbway.com. So here is the quick TR1. It's a 1000 watt hot air station and this one has all of the components integrated into the handle. So we've got an air screen at the end here. We've got a high speed blower inside the handle and air is drawn in through here, which um, large particles and hairs and stuff will get caught on here. So I do recommend you clean this regularly, but the air will be drawn through and blown out the end onto uh, the heating element just here. And this is a traditional sort of quick heating element here it is replaceable, there's some screws in here and you can replace it if the heating element burns out. And it's compatible with the usual quick nozzles like these three that came with the unit. So you just push these into the end if you want to change the airflow pattern. Um, in terms of the handpiece itself, it's very similar in design to a normal quick handpiece. The difference being that it is slightly elongated compared to normal and instead of the tube that goes to the base station instead we've got a mains cable and a cord grip here and the strain relief and in this case we've got about 1.5 meters of mains cable terminated in a standard UK plug but depending on where you buy it from uh, then it should come with the plug appropriate to your region. It is available in a 230 volt version and a 115 volt version for the US and in terms of pricing it's pretty keenly priced actually so from most sellers on AliExpress for example you can get this for less than £100 delivered. There's a few doing it for around £80 delivered which I think if this performs as well as a normal quick hot air station then that is really quite good value. We've got the user interface on the handpiece here so four buttons and a OLED display so you can change the temperature and turn it on and off and tell it to cool down. And when you do place it into this little desk cradle, it does put it into sleep mode and continue to run the blower, but it turns off the heater until it's cooled down to about 100 degrees C, which maximizes the lifetime of the heater itself. What I would say is the cradle isn't particularly heavy, and so this isn't going to stop it from moving around, especially with the PVC mains cable. I think if this was a silicone mains cable, then maybe it'd be a bit more flexible and it wouldn't be so prone to being pulled around. But I think if you were going to use this on your bench, you might want to think of a way of attaching this slightly more permanently to your bench so that uh, there's no risk of it being dragged across the bench there. So let's have a little look in more detail. Let's see if we can get this thing apart. To open the unit off, you can actually remove the filter. So you give it a twist and then a pull, and then we've got some screws on this side just here. Now unfortunately that does mean that there's some electrical connections exposed there. You can see the contacts for the main capacitor so potentially you could get your fingers in there and give yourself a bit of a shock so just be cautious of that. Here's what the unit looks like inside. So we've got the mains coming in on the right hand side here. There must be a bridge rectifier and then we've got this very large capacitor here for the rectified mains incoming voltage. We've got the high speed blower which as you can see here is rated for 
220 to 240 volts in this version. But this is in fact just a three-phase motor. You can see the three windings here, so uh, W, U and V. And so there must be a motor controller on this PCB, which we'll look at in a moment. And then just on this side, underneath you might be able to see we've got two thick wires and then a flexi cable. So we've got the mains coming onto this PCB and then the flexi is the control signal. So we've got the thermocouple in red and blue going onto here and that goes onto the flexi. And then we've got a triac here for actually controlling the heating element uh, and then the drive signals coming through on the flexi. There's also a little fuse on this PCB, a non-resettable mains fuse in case there is a gross fault with the heating element. So let's have a closer look at this PCB just here. So there are actually two main PCBs plugged into each other, so double stacked here. This is the top one that sits facing outwards. Obviously we've got the OLED just here, as well as four tactile switches and a few support components. And then on the other side here, if I can gently rotate that, you can see we've got the STM32 that is controlling the whole handpiece. We've got two op-amps here for the thermocouple. And that's about it really on this digital PCB. And then we've got some headers that go on to the PCB underneath. And this one is sort of the power PCB. So you saw we had the large capacitor on the other side. That's after this bridge rectifier so the mains comes in goes to the bridge rectifier and the mains also goes on to other pcb for driving the heater we've got a little book regulator just here which is providing the power to the user interface this isn't an isolated power supply but obviously it's all fully enclosed so there shouldn't be any risk with that and then we've got the driver for the motor and this is an sd05 m50 power driver so what we've got in here is six mosfets that can drive a three-phase output, whether that be for a transformer or into a motor. And then we've got the gate drivers here, which include the um, actual dead time control of these two MOSFETs, but the three outputs are completely separate. So it's up to you how you use this device, but we've got some five amp rated MOSFETs on the output here, the gate driver, and then all the control signals from the STM32 in this case, which allow you to drive that motor. Now you'll also note there's no feedback here. So we're driving this motor completely open loop and basically hoping that it spins. And so there will be some acceleration associated with that. They won't just blast it full at high speed. As soon as it's turned on, it'll be drawn up to try and bring the motor into action uh, so that it doesn't just sit there skipping. And then the fan and the motor itself, it's all an integrated unit and it all looks really nicely manufactured. This looks like a really high quality unit. You can see the windings at this end and the connections off to the main board. Uh, we've got some fins in there to try and direct the airflow. But yeah, this looks like a really nice little high speed motor. I think the test will be how noisy this actually is. So we're plugged into the mains. Let's power it up by holding the power button for two seconds. It immediately powers up and starts heating up the heating element. And you can see it draw a peak there of around 1400 watts. And then it will start fluctuating as the heating element gets pulsed on and off. So to adjust the temperature, you have to press the little button here. And that allows you to pick either temperature or fan speed. Currently it's at fan speed 2. And we can adjust the temperature in 5 degree increments by pressing the up and down buttons. So no presets on this device. And then if we want to change the fan speed, we go over to the other side. Lowest speed is of course one. And then if we increase the speed up to 10, it does get quite noisy. You certainly wouldn't want to be in a room full of people working on PCBs with these. So it's definitely a lot more noisy, as you can probably tell, than the usual hot air station with the base station but it is kicking out quite a lot of air there now interestingly it's mostly noise of the air rushing through the handpiece from what i can tell the motor isn't it isn't actually that noisy uh, but yeah it is very noisy at those higher speeds so that's pretty much it for the user interface uh, when you put it into the cradle it enters the cooling mode and then as soon as you take it back out it goes into heating you can also hold this button down for two seconds and it will permanently blow cool air so that turns off the heating element 
And then the other thing, um, you hold this down again for two seconds to go back to heating. And then if you hold down the power button, it will put it into cooling mode. And then as soon as it reaches 100 degrees C, it will turn it off completely. And a quick look at the calibration, you can see it's pretty much spot on. So we've got a thermocouple just in the center of the nozzle and it's reading pretty much exactly 300 degrees C when it's set to 300, so that's pretty good. Let's see if we can remove this component. So that's the quick TR1 all-in-one hot air station and overall I think it's a really nice design. If you don't have the room on your bench for a full hot air station, this one will function absolutely fine. It will certainly do pretty much uh, every job that you're likely to come across as a hobbyist. Uh, what you're really sacrificing is first of all noise levels. So this high-speed fan that's integrated into the handpiece is a lot more noisy than any of the desktop based hot air stations. And then also the handpiece is quite a bit longer. It is a little bit heavier. And the other thing that I'd like to see is maybe if this could be replaced with the normal type handpiece cradle that you see on a lot of the stations where you sort of slide it in there and they're weighted so that they're quite heavy because this one will slide around on your bench. It's really there just to put it into sleep mode. And on that note, if this cable, and this is something you could do yourself, if this cable was made from silicone, it certainly would be a lot more flexible and have a, hot, a lot less tendency to want to slide on the bench, but also uh, it would be a good improvement to increase the length of this cable because it is a little bit restrictive. You do have to have a socket quite close to where you're working. Um, if this was two metres or maybe even three metres, I think that would be a lot more usable for many people. Now, compared to some of the hot air stations that have the blower at the end, now those blowers are normally... Uh, 24 volts or something like that so you do still have to have something on your bench uh, they are quieter but I don't think they deliver in my experience quite as much air as this one does and also when you move those around you get this weird gyroscopic effect that doesn't seem to happen with this inline fan this feels quite natural uh, just as it would do if you had one with the airline going into the unit so um, certainly this one seems to feel a bit better in use it's just that noise level and that slightly high-pitched noise of the motor that is a little bit of a pain. In terms of the build quality, this handpiece is basically the same as one of the quick handpieces. It feels exactly the same in the hand. Uh, I think the only difference here is potentially this filter is a little bit thinner. It's still pretty robust by all accounts, but if this did break, as we saw before, you could gain access to mains connections on the inside there. So uh, just don't go whacking this on your desk as hard as you can, because uh, you're likely to break it. But uh, the fact that it's compatible with all of the standard quick nozzles and everything means this is really quite a nice unit at a really good price point. So I'll put a link to this item in the description down below if you're interested in taking a look. Also don't forget to visit PCB Way if you want to get some PCBs made or if you want to enter that competition. If you've got any thoughts or comments don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below and until next time thanks for watching.